So th what we're going to be reviewing today is uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Uh, it came out in the 90s. Um, to be specific, it came out in 94. Uh, and it was directed by Kevin Branagh. Uh, I think we are now familiar with Kevin Branagh. He directed Thor, the first Thor film. Uh, and he does a lot of Shakespearean uh, projects. I think currently he's busy playing the detective. I forgot the name of the detective, but it's, he was in the um, Death of the Nile. And the one that came out before was um, Murder on the Express Train or something like that. The Orient Express. Ah, Meda on the Orient Express. He was also in Oppenheimer, Chris Nolan's Oppenheimer, and uh, in Christopher Nolan's uh, Dunkirk. Um, he was also in The Road to El Dorado, Harry Potter, and The Chamber of Secrets. Um, he was also in The Wild Wild West, funny enough. I yes. think it was, it was, was he the, the villain, no? Um, yeah, he was the villain. The sky yeah. guy. The, the guy with the big head. Yes. <laughs> in the wheelchair, yeah. Wheelchair. Oh, man. I, it's only... Um, I'm only realizing that now. I didn't even think it was him all along. But now that I think about it, I realize it was him. It was a great job done by him. Um, oh, I don't reason? think I've seen him have a horrible performance in anything. I know. Yeah, he does a very good job. He, he really knows his role and he follows through with it. Definitely. Yeah. So whether the movie flops or not, it's not on him. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And now it's a good one. Now that he just, he just, he, he was the white guy in, in Blue Eye Samurai, so that was cool. Who was he? Um, Fowler. Who's Fowler again? The white guy, the white devil. That was him. Yes. Abijah Fowler. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay. I know his voice is very different there. Like I almost couldn't believe it, but yeah, that's him. But I guess that's the. I guess you could say it's 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 one of the. The telltale signs of a great actor, if you yeah. cannot really tell that it was him, or her, because sometimes, uh, I mean, sometimes, I mean, you and I have spoken about this a few times that uh, sometimes it just feels like these actors are, they're just playing the same character with different names. Uh, I mean, we did an example with uh, The Rock. He even wears the same thing and is in a jungle. <laughs> And we, exactly. we had this with the same outfit, yes. Yes. So when you see an actor and someone told you, no, no, that was El Pacino. You're like, wait, 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 wait. That old man the, with the chair uh, at, the, at the barn and he was just chilling there and could barely speak and was drooling. That was El Pacino? Yeah, that was El Pacino. What? He was only in there like, for like two seconds. Like, bro, I know, right? So I think that's the great thing about... Uh, trivia and uh, great performances. I mean, it blew it blew my mind when I saw um, that when I realized that Eddie Murphy played that uh, old Jewish man in the barber shop in Tommy oh, yeah. 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 yeah, definitely the best one. Where like some people really didn't know that he was in um, what is it called? Um, Tropic Thunder. People didn't know he was in there. I didn't oh. know Tom Cruise was in Tropic Thunder. You mean Tom Cruise? No, Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Cruise. Some people didn't know those. I didn't know Tom Cruise was there until yeah. someone told me. And some, <laughs> people didn't, some people didn't know that Robert Downey Jr. was there until they yeah. were. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't know that was that was Kevin um, playing that villain role. That's amazing. Um, so, yeah, that's Kevin. Brilliant man. Uh, I think he's underrated, actually. Kenneth. Sorry, it's Kenneth. Yeah, I, I think it's underrated. I think it should be way up there um, yeah. amongst like the greats. Uh, and Tom Hiddleston, I remember watching the Graham Norton, sh Graham Norton show. Mm -hmm. Tom Hiddleston was giving him his flowers because he was, oh, sorry about sorry about that. I didn't realize that I was I was exporting a video that I was editing earlier on. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so. Tom Hiddleston was was giving him his flowers because he was saying that uh, if it wasn't for him, he wouldn't have been Loki because he also he he cast him as Loki. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody knows Tom Hiddleston now as he's a household name basically. Definitely. And it was all thanks to Kevin. I mean, sorry, Kenneth. 
Yes. So, guys, throughout the video, if I say Kevin, just know that it's Kenneth. Because <laughs> I keep saying Kevin. <laughs> like, who is Kevin? What is happening? <laughs> anyway, um, the the film stars um, uh, right. Kenneth as the as Victor Frankenstein. So he's not just the, the director, but he's also the, the star of the, the film. And we also have Robert De Niro as Frankenstein's monster. Um, wow, man. His performance in this movie is amazing. Riveting. Like, I I guess you could say that he's a supporting... He has a supporting role for me in this. He's a secondary lead because it becomes about him almost in the second half, basically. Yeah, I don't know whether to say he's the second or the third, but you are right. You are yeah. right. Yeah, it's it's probably the second. Yeah, it's probably the second. Yeah. Um, and I think we've we have given our we have given a um a list of films that Robert De Niro has done in the past when we did our Ronin review. But if you're new and you don't know, we've mentioned that Robert De Niro has done in films such as Heat. Um, Joker, yeah. Irishman, um, Irishman, yes, uh, Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. The um, intern, that's your favorite. Which one? The intern. The intern, yes, Raging Bull. Yeah. Uh, Limitless. Yeah. Some good stuff here, man. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, American Hustle. Oh yeah. Silver Linings Playbook. So. Uh, joy. He's done quite a, a lot of films. I'm sure he has over 100 films. And yeah. Men yeah. of Honor, Shark Tale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Men of Honor, Shark Tale, yes. Um, has he ever done a war movie? Oh, he has with Christopher Walken, right? What's the name of that movie again? Where they play Russian roulette? And, well, they don't play it. So. The Vietnam War. Yes. Yeah. Deer Hunter. I think that's a movie we need to watch. I haven't watched it at all, but whenever I see a scene from that movie, everybody is always in tears. Like in the comments, they're like, "Dude, this was the most one of the most emotional moments." I'm like, "Eh." So yeah, no, that's a movie we need to watch. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then we have Helena Bo- Bonham Carter. Carter, yes. I feel like after every two films or so, we mention her name. <laughs> Like, the way we mention this woman is crazy, bro. Like, we mention her almost every single time. Yeah, she's, the, she's in some of our favorite stuff, man. That's all you can say, really. Yeah. And you can tell, like, she likes doing... She likes portraying, like, gothic characters. Yeah. If the characters are not gothic, they have, they have to be slightly weird. Or eccentric, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have to be eccentric. I wanted to use that word, but I wasn't sure whether it would fit here. But yeah, definitely eccentric characters. Like uh, I watched Alona Holmes recently and one and two. Um, she's she the mom, was, right? Yeah. And you can okay. see there she's eccentric too. She's really? just, just a vibe. Yeah. I'm really struggling to see her as an old woman. I, I can't. Because uh, like, yeah. uh, like, I haven't seen those movies yet, but I'm like, uh, really? You, Henry Cavill's mom? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we've mentioned, we've 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 also done her film filmography before. I mean, we've spoken about stuff like Sweetie Todd. Yeah. Um, she was also in Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah. Anything with Johnny Depp in it or Tim Burton, the ex yeah. husband. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, remember, she was also in. Yes, you're right. Oh, Johnny Depp was also in this one, mm-hmm. uh, where he played Tonto. Yes, Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. Yes, she was in the. She was also in Ocean's Thirteen, which I still think it's a movie that that it's a wasted film. We had so many great actresses in there, but it's better I don't know. than twelve. Thirteen is better than twelve. Twelve was actually incoherent. Like, yeah. Look, for me, I would say it's twelve. Um, no, no, not 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 thirteen. Sorry, oceans. No, oceans. What nine? I thought so because I was like, when did you see her? Ah, oh, okay. That <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Sorry, I meant is it ocean nine? The one with uh, it's eight. Sorry, oceans eight. 
Because yes. obviously, obviously, they were, they were probably pl- they're probably planning on doing nine and ten. Because with the guys starts at eleven, right? I'm assuming. I would assume so, but my goodness, that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Eight. Yeah. I'm sorry, right. That's what I meant. Ocean's eight. Sorry, uh, but I wanted to say, eleven for me is the best. Then it's thirteen. Then I guess you could say it's eight. Then it's twelve. Twelve was horrible, man. Yeah, 12 was just, it was alarming how incoherent it was. Like, wow, they were just freestyling or something. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know why those guys accepted that script. You know, sometimes actors would be like, no way, so we're not going <laughs> to. Oh, definitely. Um, I think an example of that would be when Jackie Chan refused um, to do another rush hour because he, he was just not happy with the script. Makes sense. Especially Especially after Rush Hour 3, he was like, no, no. So, yeah. yeah. But hey, it is what it is. Um, And then some other people that we need to mention here, um, it's... Uh, then Tom Hulse is probably the next person you have to really mention. Who? Um, The guy that played Henry, the best friend. Oh, yes, yes. Edward uh, Hulse. Tom who? Thomas Edward Hulse, I would assume. I think it's probably uh, the time I see such a surname. H U L C E. Yes. Oh. Wow, he's 70 years old and he looks like he's 43. Yep. But there's only <laughs> one real movie here that I really. My God, this guy's. Yeah. Um, oh, he was in Amadeus. One of the greatest films of all time. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever watched it, but let's put it like this it took home almost every single Oscar. The only thing that's ever come close is Lord of the Rings, um, The Return of the King. It took home almost every single Oscar available. Best no, picture, no, no. best music, best, um, you name it, it took it home. It was incredible. I don't know. The only Amadeus that I'm familiar with is that song. You know that song? No. Uh, Jesus, no. <laughs> do you know, do you know uh, the lady, what's her name? Um... She has a song called Wild Child, man. What's her name again? Is it uh, Enya? Enya. Enya. You know Enya? Yes, I know Enya. Yes. What's song called? Enya, Enya has a... Well, Enya did some vocals for a song called Amadeus. And the song is called Amadeus by Amadeus. Dude, you know that song. It's just that I can't hum it to save my life. And even if I hum it, you'd get lost. But because Amadeus is Mozart, is basically uh, Mozart. That's like his name or whatever his other name or something like his, that. His second name, yes. But um, just so you know, Oscar winner, best picture. Oscar winner, best actor in a leading role. Oscar nominee, best actor in a leading role. So they sh- they basically the two main actors competed for the same Oscar. Um, Oscar winner. Best Director, Oscar winner, Best Writing Screenplay. What the uh, hell, bro? Be- Oscar nominee, Best Cinematography, Oscar winner, Best Art Direction, Oscar winner, Best Costume Design, Oscar winner, Best Sound, Oscar nominee, Best Film Editing, Oscar winner, Best Makeup. It was that hardcore. I've never heard of this. I do not know. I, it, it, let me just put it like this. I bought the DVD. It was so good. I just It rocked my world. You and know... I- uh, yeah. For some people that for people that don't know, I don't know which year you'll be born, not to know this, but if someone went to buy a DVD back in the day, you knew how great that movie was because you had to save up for that movie and buy a DVD. Oh, so, sure. Yeah. I see they had a budget of 18 million and, and made 90 million at the box office. Um what? Um oh, I'm a Hey, it was a, it was a epic art piece. So you know, you know, I think it was probably in that time period when movies started to get too expensive. Yeah. Because um, remember those days like Ben Hur and um, what's it, The Prince of Arabia? That was when like films were making so much money that they could go big. Yeah. And they had to be there. It was like a regression where things kind of went back down. Which is basically what we're going through right now, by the way. It's what Yeah, that's true. Because after that whole Marvel thing, it seems like yeah. movies are starting to go back down. Because they have to, because you can't tell me a movie... You movie, can't compete. Mm. But like, The Irishman can cost 80 million. It's impossible. Do you know what I yeah. mean? 
100%. Now you can't do that anymore because now you must just, yeah. It's a bit tough, man, because these studios, man, they're now releasing like monster films and they're still, they're still like sucking the last life out of these superhero films and they, they are like doing these epic space opera stuff. So it's like they're, they're still sucking the life out of this, this trend. Yeah. And the price of marketing doubles the price of the budget normally. So, um, so imagine that. Like, what's a good example? Like, let's say the um, Indiana Jones. They say it costs almost three hundred million to make. And they made a huge loss on that one. Eh? Dog, that's the price of a video game nowadays. To make a video game, that's so. That's and that's a huger production than a movie. Just to market the thing. Yeah. So. Easy. But what does the money? Okay, look, I do understand that with marketing, I mean, there's different, there's traditional and then there's alternative. Yes, you have digital. I'm sure maybe like booking uh, space at like a Times Square, it's probably expensive, you know, for marketing or in China on a billboard. I get that. Now. So now, remember, I don't know about you, but my Facebook shows me um, Oppenheim. What's it? What's a new movie coming out now? Um, but shows you a bunch of movies coming out now that I'm not even interested in, but it shows it to me. Like Joker. Um, yeah, Joker too. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get beaten up with that now. Um, so like stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I know. I do know that the the budget for social media is usually crazy. Yep, Disney and all that stuff that costs money. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, I think it, is it DSTV. Yeah. If you. If you are like on catch up and you're watching something and then you pause, mm. immediately when you pause, that there's a there's a static ad of something there. So it's the new normal. Yeah, but anyway, before yeah. we we head out, I just wanna say, I just wanna read what you was just saying here. Um, Amadeus was nominated for fifty three awards and received forty, Crazy. including eight Academy Awards, winning Academy Award for Best Picture, four BAFTA Awards, four Golden Globes Awards. The Directors Guild of America Award. As of 2024, it is the most recent film to have more than one nomination in the Academy Award for Best Actor category. This <sighs> fought each other for the same award. That's that's you've never seen that before. No. You've never seen that before. And yeah, Tom Holtz, man. Wow, I am. Um... The idea that you haven't watched it is mind blowing because, but it's like a two hour film like this one and it's dramatic like this one and it's set in this kind of day and age as well. And it is, oh my God, there's a thing, oh crap now, because um, this is all stuff for when we do this movie eventually, but um, the stuff about it, I got to give you the information, wait, I got to give you the information because like basically what it is, is the story of Mozart beginning and end kind of thing. It's a very dramatic, done from the perspective of the second best musician. Yeah. So it's not the story of Mozart from the perspective of Mozart. It's the story of Mozart from the perspective of um, some, what's his name again? Um, Antonio Sarelelli. And he's like, he's like talented. He's worked hard his whole life. Mozart is out there making it look easy. And he's just out there struggling with this stuff. So it's, a, it's, it's like, if, uh, yeah? it's like if Vegeta was to be narrating Dragon Ball Z. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I get you. That's um, hectic. I know there's it's based on something like the story of Cain and Abel or something like that. I can't remember. But there's something like that where they could, like the whole story is like, like a biblical representation or something like that. Uh, mm. Damn it. I don't know if it's a story of Cain and Abel, but it's something like that. But I thought that was just fascinating. No, no. I think then it should be high on our list. <laughs> Because I know, like I told you, I know the song, but I do know, I, th I think there was like a Broadway thing or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, like a, like a stage play or something like that. Yeah. But I didn't know there was a movie. So, yeah. But anyway. Um, oh, by the fun fact, Amadeus actually means, because um, um, in love of God, that's what the term Amadeus means. Oh. In love of God. Yeah. So, yeah, Holtz has been in mm -hmm. um, Fearless Parenthood, um, Shadow Man, uh, the TV mo movie Murder in Mississippi, mm. 
It's uh, stuff I know less of. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. I don't know that well. Yeah. Same here. Um, then um, the Heidi Chronicles. Stranger than fiction. I do know Stranger than fiction. Uh, well, not that I've watched it. I, I'm familiar with the, the the title, and then he was also in Jumper. Oh, I feel like a lot of people were in Jumper, but the movie just didn't. Say, who was he in Jumper? Like, I don't know. Like I've seen that movie like three times. Who the well, hell was he? I watched this movie way more than three times, but I don't remember him in it. Was he the dad? Maybe. No, oh, you know who the the dad was. It was uh, this guy in Guardians of the Galaxy who plays uh, Michael Rooker. Yeah, Michael. Yeah. So he wasn't the dad, definitely. Not. Unless if he was, because I remember there was a scene at the bar in the bar. Maybe he was one of the barmen, or like one maybe of one of like the the girl's dad. Maybe because I think like, I know I agree. He goes to that bar thing. Yeah, maybe it was the girl's dad. I don't know. Mr. Balker. I'm trying to think what the hell is that? The hell is Mr. Balker, bro? Oh. <laughs> maybe I can Google. Uh, but you see, this is the... Guys, uh, by the way, this is the whole point of this podcast. Um, in as much as we know a lot of stuff, we still learn a lot. And this is basically you guys witnessing us learning something <laughs> as we keep going. Because I didn't know about Amadeus. And now we're both finding out about Jaffa. Yeah. Uh, this thing is faces and ringing a bell. He looks young in this though. It's weird. If, if it's this is extremely that. young, dog. Because this shows how old we are. Because Jumper could not have been that long ago. No, man. Jumper was like, what, 2008? Seven, yeah. something? Oh, yeah. anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, anyway. Maybe we need to yeah. review it. Because clearly, yeah, yeah, and then we have um, Aiden Quinn. Ah, yes, Aiden. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Aiden. Yes, Aiden Quinn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I found the other eye there. <laughs> he was in uh, Reckless in 1984. That was his film debut, and then he was in uh, over 80 films. Uh, including uh, Desperately Seeking Susan. So I think the one we would all know is Practical Magic. The dream guy in Practical Magic. I don't know Practical Magic. Don't mess with me right now. I'm for real, dog. It has, some, it has Sandra, Bullock, yes. Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. You never saw this as a kid. Two of some of the most beautiful women on the planet. No, I don't. I no, no, it's such a beautiful movie. Like it's better than the than the Co- Covenant, in my opinion. Um, the other one with witches. Basically, they like they like these like suburban witches. It turns out like, magic is real. And these when they're kids, they like try to engage in the witchcraft and they cause a bad spell because one of the kids is rebellious, and the this, the mothers have to like close up the spell, but it's like. It starts to spill over when they're older and it like negatively affects them and they have to come back together because they separated as teen adult teenagers. It's such a good movie. Let me put it like that. It's a great it movie. Kinda of sounds like charmed, but I hear you though. It, no, hundred percent charmed vibes. I hundred percent charmed vibes, but it's its own movie. It really is. Beautiful, um, pleasant, let's put it like that. Nothing like brutal, like that's have you seen the Roll Dolls Witches one? Mm-mm. What? As a kid? With like Rowan Atkinson. Um, they were like this. It's disgusting. Like, I couldn't believe that was a kid's movie. Yeah, like, yeah. A remake with Anne Hathaway, which is, I didn't even watch it because it looks so CG. Are you not talking about, are you not talking about Hocus Pocus? Uh, no, Hocus and Pocus is the one. Hocus and Pocus. Hocus and Pocus is one of the <laughs> <Hitler. laughs> um, Hocus Pocus is the one with what? Bet Midler. Trust me, it's not that one. Bed Midler is the fun one. Um, the Witches is the brutal one. Like, okay, Anne Hathaway, but no, it's, I think 1990s. Here we go. The Witches. Which which one is the one with the rats and stuff? That's the one with the rat. Yes, where they they, they, they turn kids into rats and then eat them. That's Hocus Pocus, right? No, that's The Witches. Oh, okay, I've seen that one then. Is that the the lady that that played um, Wednesday's mom in Adam's yeah. Family? Right? Yes. The actress. Yes. And uh, Alicia well, Houston. 
I'm not talking about I'm not talking about Catherine Zeta Jones for yes. anybody who might Angelica be. Angelica Houston is her name. Who? The one that plays the main witch in um, the witches, Angelica Houston. Angelica, you know, I always wish that that woman would actually play Cher one day. Um, right, because they look so alike. Yeah. Yeah, dude, this looks so familiar. You absolutely know her, but yeah, Adam's family. You're right, the 1991 one. Oh, okay, yeah. Then I've I've watched the the witches then, the, but the nineties. Do you remember how brutal it was? Like how, oh, like, yeah, dude, like, like the makeup, makeup and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And because it wasn't CG, it was real life. It looked so much worse somehow. Yeah. No, the practically, you know, these makeup, that practical makeup, man, it makes everything look a bit too scary. You know, especially for kids. Like back in the days, but we were exposed to like the weirdest stuff, talk. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I could never watch the Anne Hathaway one because it can't hold up. Because CGI just doesn't do it, man. Yeah, no, I get you. I get it had Guillermo del Toro, which is always a good thing. But even he knows better than to you. But the, for the, it was directed by Robert Zemeckis. And, he, you know, his CGI started getting out of date from, like, the 90s. Who, like, is, who is better, in your opinion, between del Toro and... Uh, and um... I was going to say Burton. Yes. Goth with goth. Um, that's a tough one because I think um, Tim Burton can make a family friendly goth. Like what? Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice, um, the original Batman. Um, hell, even that the weird one he did with um, the Disney one, Sin- Snow, White, Snow White, not Cinderella. What's that woman's name? Oh, um... Alice, there we go. Even that. It is, that feels so... is that a Disney thing? Yeah, it's Disney. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's a Disney product. Um, Tim yeah. Burton is... Got this... Chocolate Factory. Yes, it's got this wonderful vibe. Okay, no. I'm not a fan of Chocolate Factory. I think the original was too strong to ever separate it from that one. Okay, I haven't watched the original. Why? I... Aggression. This is why we're doing this podcast, okay? <laughs> Which means your first experience is the friendly one. Is the Johnny Depp one? Yes, the adorable weirdo. See, is that, is that the friendly one? Yes, that's the friendly one. Gene Wilder basically makes it seem like he makes it seem like a horror movie with kids. But I also felt that way when I watched the, the one with Tim Burton. Like, I feel like Willy Wonka is such an evil man. Like, watch OG. The things, that happen, the things that happen to those kids. Yeah. Like, but obviously, it's a one, one could one argue movie. that it's, it's the kid's fault, but yeah. still. Well, it's totally the kid's fault. The only difference is the movie doesn't excuse them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Normally, uh, something a kid will do something and then a parent will excuse them. Mm-mm. Movie doesn't do that. Yeah, look, we need to do some Gene Wilder films. I, knew, I do know he has a movie with Richard Pryor. We, one was deaf, one was no, blind. See no, see no evil. Yeah. See no, see no evil. Fantastic comedy. Um, but definitely watch Holy Wonka first. Oh, okay. Gene Holy Wonka. But yeah. No, we'll get there. But yeah. anyway, the reason we even went there is because we were just talking. Our practical <laughs> magic, yes. Aiden <laughs> Quinn yep. and practical magic. So yeah, um, I, don't, I mean, he was in Elementary the series. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did. I I didn't even watch it. Like I do know it's a retelling of Sherlock Holmes, but I can't believe it has six seasons. That's crazy. Uh, but you know, man, Americans are good at selling you something. I mean, um, I was watching some scenes from The Rookie. Yeah. And you can tell that they ran out of ideas because, the, you know, the, when they're doing this whole story thing of doppelgangers, and it's like almost everybody had a doppelganger in that episode. I'm like, no, 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 no ways. <laughs> but anyway, um, then you have Richard Breers? Breers? Um, wait, I'm going to step behind. Here we go. Yeah, I guess Briar is probably good. But yeah. Brian, the Godfather, Grandfather. I feel like that's a smaller uh, role. Who is even the Grandfather? Yeah, no, I have no idea who, who he played there. 
Yeah, Victor's father is more important. I think Ian Hall. Yeah, let's get, let's get to Ian. We apologize for anybody who's a fan of the man we just mentioned. <laughs> no. Like, I mean, we cannot even give you his filmography. I mean, I think what it says here is that... Um, He was an English actor whose five-decade career encompassed film, radio station, television. So it's probably more more well known in um, in Britain. Yes. Because, yeah, he was in ha- Hamlet, uh, also done by Kevin Bronner in '96, and then he was in a movie called As You Like It, um, which has Bryce Dallas Howard, my crush. But yeah, 2006. That's all we can say about that, unfortunately. But yeah, we were talking about Ian Holm. Ian Holm. Um, no, I mean, the OG Hobbit. Yeah, Bilbo. Yep. Bilbo Baggins. I mean, I think we spoke about him as well before. I remember us having a conversation about him. But yeah, he was in Terriers of Fire. Um, apparently. He won a second a BAFTA award for that role. Oh, nice, nice. But I think that's not really what we know him for. I think what we more know him for is the Hobbit, and of course, um, oh, he the, was the Fifth Element. Do you remember he was like the was he like the the the, the priest or something? Yes, the priest and Fifth ele- Elephant Element. Yes. What? <laughs> it's a novel called Fifth Elephant. Oh. Uh, Terry Pratchett novel, that's why I got confused there. But yeah, Fifth Element. Um, and of course, the uh, competing arms dealer in Lord of War. Yeah, th- uh, don't don't kill me, but I still haven't watched that movie. And then uh, there's The Madness of King George. That sounds interesting. Mm. I wonder if The Mad King was not inspired by The Madness of King George. That's something that I think I need to have a look into. Into that, yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. But yeah, man's got a massive um, British yeah. BBC list of stuff here. And he never disappoints. Dude, I mean, for me, at a point, it definitely felt like the fifth element was about the priest. <laughs> I don't want to lie to you. At a and point? Yeah, yeah, he was funny as all hell, definitely. Dude, he got a lot of screen time. And uh, he was in The Aviator, funny enough. No, I do not what, know. What do you know about um, Howard Hughes, man? Howard Hughes... Because I do know that uh, one of the inspirations for... Okay, look, let me put it like this. One of the inspirations for the live-action version of Iron Man was... Um, oh, the, the aviator guy. I don't know much about him, man. Yeah, yeah. So the live-action version of Iron Man, the, one of the inspirations was... Uh, who's this guy? Who's this rich guy now, man? One of the richest guys in the world? Huh? Tony Stark. No, no, no. I'm talking about like an actual person that inspired Eric Branson. No, no. One of the richest guys now in in the world. Um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah. But then uh, the comic book version mm-hmm. was inspired by um, this guy. Makes sense. Eighty year old comics. So yeah, makes sense. Or what? Fifty, sixty years old. I'm not sure. Yeah, Howard Hughes. Yeah, because apparently he was eccentric as hell, dog. Yeah. Makes sense. Anyway, um, yeah. And that's Ian Holm, Sir Ian Holm. Um, and then who else are we missing here? That's vitally important. Uh, there's that lady, man, who was who was the mother? Not 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 Victor's mother, but I think she was like the babysitter or something. I don't know. Ah uh, yes. Um also a relevant character, one second. Celia Imre. Okay. Yeah, Imre sounds right. Mrs. Holtz, yeah. So it seems like most of these people that we're mentioning, uh, even when we were doing Harry Potter, they have a CBE under their name, which is the most excellent order of the British Empire. So... Uh, which is a British order of chivalry rewarding contributions to the arts, scientists, and sciences, work with the charitable and welfare welfare organizations and public service outside the civil service. So it seems like most of them are really recognized for that, for their work. Mm. Um, it's just that I guess uh, Hollywood doesn't necessarily 
Um, it's British stuff, so it kind of makes sense. Yes, it? yes. I mean, she was in the Bridget Jones film series. Yeah. Uh, she was in Calendar Girls, which I, I still say that it's one of the movies that we need to watch. Okay. Um, she was in Nanny McPhee. Yes. I do remember her in Nanny McPhee because I think she wanted to be one of the... She wanted to marry um, Colin Firth in there. Mm-hmm. And then she was in the Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Yes. And the second Best Marigold Hotel. <laughs> hotel. Uh, she was in Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was in The Big Bad Fox and other tales. Obviously, I mean, she probably has an extensive filmography, but yeah, those are some of the movies that she's been part of. I just don't know who played her daughter and who her daughter is in this movie. Um, Traven McDowell was her daughter. Okay. Um, and she is known for... Okay, Frank. Middle's March, Middle March, Capital City TV show, and An Ideal Husband. These are not stuff I can really say, but... Her stuff just stops abruptly at 1999. Uh, She's still with us? I guess she got married and decided to wrap it up there. Yeah, because it all stops at 1999. So, and she's still alive, so. What's her name? Um, she's got four kids. She is born in South Africa. What's her name? Um, T R E V Y N, Traven McDowell. Oh. Born in Johannesburg, South Africa. Oh. Yeah. And it seems like she was she started in a lot of stuff, eh? A few things, yeah. Turns out, well, I guess she picked marriage. Well, picked a family, yeah. She was in films, television programs, theater, radio. Mm. In her adopted homeland of England, so she was adopted. That adopted homeland doesn't necessarily oh, mean you're adopted. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You could just be moved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I would pinch you right now if we're next to each other. But um, all right, that's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't seem seem like she has. Someone definitely didn't do research on a on a, on a resume, which yeah, sucks. Really limited. It looks so small. And then, of course, let's not forget about John Cleese. I think we need to have a, a British friend, dog. I think you and I do a lot of British stuff. We need to have someone who who, have, who has an extensive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can find someone. Knowledge on on British stuff. Um, yes, John Cleese. Uh, but who did he play though? And that's the best part. The professor that I was see, he was it. They they gave him some prosthetics, and this man disappeared. Um, And I had to stare at the screen for a while to see. No ways. Don't tell me. No ways, dog. Don't tell me. This is with the the journals. One that gets stabbed. Yes, one of the journals. Oh, no ways. That's not John Cleese. Nah, nah, bro. Agent Q. (laughs) No freaking ways, dog. That is John Cleese. Yes, that is John Cleese. But you see... This goes back to the conversation we just had a few minutes ago about if you're a really good actor, you won't even notice. Yep. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. I think it's the entire cast, right? Yeah, it should be everyone. 